In doing my reviews, I try to include all the distros I can possibly find. And out of all of those, the one that was most surprising to me the last time I looked at it was Seduction OS. And that's what we're going to take a look at today on EBA Central. Before we get started with today's video, I want to remind everybody, whether you're a patron of my channel or not, zip on over to my Patreon page, scroll down until you get to the 10,000 subscriber video that I have posted here. Everybody can watch it. I want you to take a look at it. I have to put it on Patreon because there are certain rules on YouTube that I can't break. And let's just say this rhymes with schmib away. But anyway, zip on over there. Take a look at that video. There's a lot of good information in it. Also, if you haven't had a chance to get on over to the eBuzz Central store, please do. We've got everything from Linux Mint to Arch. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, mugs, you name it, it's over there. And if there's something that's not on there that you would like to see, drop it in the comments below and we'll do our darndest to get it up there for you. So now let's go ahead and get to that video. Now, Seduction OS is pretty impressive. It is based on Unstable Debian. That's where you come up with the word SID. And then Seduction. They put those two words together and you get Seduction OS. It is a rolling release. <laughs> It is what you probably would call the continuation of the AptoSid community from back in the day. It's been around since 2011, so it's about an 11-year-old distribution. And it's also got a great forum, great news. Uh, downloads, you can get it in, I think, three different flavors. You can get it in KDE Plasma, LXQT, or XFCE. But I'm killing two birds with one stone today because I want to look at the LXQT desktop environment. Because I really do like it, and I think it's very impressive. And it's really lightweight, and you still get something that's, uh, you know, quick, snappy, and has a little bit of beauty to it. What we're going to do real quick is I'm going to close out of this, and we're going to go over to the Seduction desktop. Now, if you download Seduction, throw it on a USB, or open it up in a virtual machine and boot into it, this is the screen you're going to be met with. Right off the bat, it's got a nice, beautiful wallpaper. You've got a single panel down here on the bottom. And then you've got Install System, IRC, and then you've got the Seduction Handbook here. So first thing I want to do is I just want to right-click on the screen here. You can create new, paste, show desktop, create launcher, desktop preferences. Let's go ahead and check that out real quick. So you've got general. You can change icons, labels, backgrounds. You can select a solid background color. Wallpaper mode, zoom in the image different wallpapers. I don't think you're going to get a lot out of the box because it is a lightweight operating system. And then you've got slideshow. If you want to bring your own wallpaper folder over, you could just enable slideshow and then point this to where the wallpaper folder is. Then you've got advanced. You can add home, trash, computer to your desktop if you want to, or you could remove them if they're already there. So let's close out of that. And like I said, you've got a single panel right here. You come down to the bottom, you've got power, you've got date and time right here. And then sound, clipboard, eject USB device, network, keyboard layout, scroll lock, number lock, caps lock. So it will let you know if you turn caps lock or number lock on. I like that because some operating systems, you don't know if you're actually on it and you have to look at your keyboard. And some operating systems just don't give you that option at all. So just a little plus in my book. Let's go ahead and right click on the panel. Right here, you can configure Task Manager, move Task Manager, or remove it, and then you can configure the panel, manage widgets, add widgets if you want to. Let's go ahead and configure the panel. And right here, you can see that you get a little bit of customization with your panel. You can make it bigger, smaller, I believe. Yep, make it going bigger and smaller. And then, of course, you can change your icon size if you'd like to. You can make those bigger or smaller. As you can see, the panel adjusts with that as well. And then you can have alignment of the center, the bottom of the desktop, background color, font color, background image. And then you've got widgets over here. You've got your desktop switcher, quick launch. These are just some that you have right here. And then, of course, you could add some in the future if you wanted to. Just scroll down through here. Pick what you might want to add, or you can do a search for one. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Come down to the bottom, you've got your settings. Let's go ahead and open up settings. And you're probably familiar with these settings layout. You've got appearance. Let's go ahead and click on appearance. And when it opens up, it gives you what kind of widget style you can have. And then down here, you have the QT palette. You can change the colors if you would like to. That's really up to you. That's a 
personal preference type thing there. Then you've got icon themes. Right now it's running the papyrus icon theme. You can change it to the papyrus dark if you wanted to. Let's go ahead and do that. And as you can see, things kind of get a little different down there. So let's go ahead and change that. Then you've got your LXQT theme. Right now we're on the Winter Sky theme. Now you can change this to the KDE Plasma or the Frost. So let's go ahead and click that and apply. And as you can see, everything kind of changed down here. You get different looks on your open icons. Let's go back to Winter Sky. Let's apply that. And as you can see, everything changes back. So you've got a little bit of customization here, but at the same time, it's a really lightweight OS. So that's really up to you how you want to do it. Then you've got your fonts and then color right here. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. You've got brightness, date and time, desktop, desktop notifications, monitor settings, power management, session settings, users, and groups. You've got your ADSL configuration, alternative configuration, and then of course you've got Synaptic Package Manager. Now if you're not familiar with Synaptic, I won't go in depth with it because I have in previous videos. Okay, when it opens up, it looks something like this. You can just make that a little bigger. You've got different things here that you can do, but it all comes down to putting applications or removing applications from your operating system. It's got layouts for section, status, origin, custom filters, search results, and architecture. I'm going to go up here and do sections, and what you really want to do is you can come up here and do a search if you'd want to. Then just put the name of whatever application you're looking for in there, do the search, and then when it comes up, all you'd have to do is go up here and click on this. And what you would want to do is mark for installation. Once that's done, you come down here, click yes, and then click apply, and you can install whatever software you want to on the system. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And we'll close out of the settings. Show desktop, desktop one and two. So we'll go up here. Accessories, you've got uh, Midnight Commander, Editor, and you've got PC Man File Manager. Let's go ahead and open this up. Now, PC Man is pretty lightweight, kind of old school when you think about file managers. You've got your usual suspects over here, and then you've got your home folders right here. It's really lightweight, stays out of your way, and just lets you get things done. Now, you do have the option to put a different file manager on this system, but I think for what this system is and what it's utilized for, I think this is perfect. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Now, I do want to look up, let's look up Terminal real quick. LXQT Terminal, because I want to see what kind of resources we are using. So let's go ahead and see if they have HTOP. And they do have HTOP. Let's go ahead and maximize that so everybody can see it. And let's make that a little bigger. As you can see right there, I've only got 1.93 gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. At present, it's using about 603 megs. So that's not bad at all. I've been taking a lot different look at things lately, especially with RAM usage in operating systems. Um, I have people tell me all the time, I'll be showing a video with a GNOME desktop and it's using a gig and everybody's like, it's so heavy, it's so heavy. Little do we remember the days of Windows and being at three or four gigs just to be open on a desktop. That's my opinion. If you think something different, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and close out a terminal. And yes, I want to close. Let's come back down to the bottom here. And then you've got LibreOffice Writer, LXQT Configuration Center we already looked at. So at the end of the day, Seduction OS. If you're somebody that loves Debian, wants a little different look, or just wants to try something else in the Debian family, it's definitely something I'd recommend to go download and throw in a USB and take for a test drive. And if you're somebody that's really interested in just the LXQT desktop environment, I would definitely download this, take it for a test drive, because I think it really utilizes the LXQT environment quite well. And if you do do that, please come back, leave a comment, let me know what you think. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member right here on YouTube, going over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel, buying us a coffee, or zipping on over to PayPal and throwing us a donation. And I want to take a little time right now to thank the people that make this channel possible and that's all of my supporters my youtube members and my patrons executive producer mislav krileja producer mitchell valentino vip sponsors are eugene lee brian mitchell antoine wilk all access sponsors mike depolis and pj sponsors kato gosted nitrix development team 
Chad Jones, David Collins, Marco Lopez, Steve Willard, Eric Crowell, Joel Solorzano, Warlock, Sibius, Art Edwards, Marmaduke, Keith Hefner, and Stein Sailor Audland. Thank you guys. You're the reason this channel exists. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, here are a couple more for you to take a look at. I generally cover Linux and open source, but sometimes I do do a little Windows bashing and maybe a little Google bashing as well. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.